So today I decided I'm going to race myself. Uh, I have to fly from Nashville to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, a 689 nautical mile direct flight. Um, I'm doing that via airline with a connection in Atlanta. Uh, what I wanted to see is what's more practical and cost effective to fly an airline down to Fort Lauderdale or if I were going to take 12994. Just a little bit of background. On my day job, I travel quite a bit for work. Um, majority of time that's done via airline. So that's how I'm traveling today. Uh, not that I even could fly my airplane if I wanted to because it is full IMC, about 500 foot ceilings here, and not instrument rated. So to accomplish its theoretical race, I planned a flight from Nashville to Fort Lauderdale with a field stop in Albany, Georgia. This, of course, assuming there would be no weather delays or any other type of potential issues that would slow down the flight. My total flight time in the aircraft would have been about six hours. Add a fuel stop into that, it might be about seven hours, versus my total flight time with an airline at about five and a half hours. One factor to consider, however, is that on my flight from Nashville to Atlanta, we sat on the ground for about 20 minutes for a flow time delay. If you took the time that I actually arrived at the airport at 8 a.m., if I were getting the aircraft ready to go, I would probably be through Atlanta, well into Albany, at the time that I arrived in Atlanta via airline. So I'm totally the kind of nerd that would track this kind of thing, but this is actually my 200th time being here, changing planes in Atlanta, not including what I do at work for the airport, so that's kind of a big deal. Plus, uh, this is the first time I get to ride on a Delta A321. Actually, it's the first time I ever get to ride on an A321 today, so I'm also excited about that. The next thing to consider on a trip like this is cost. My round trip airfare was $477.62. Doing some rough math, it would take about 13 hours total flight time to make the complete round trip. Multiply that by my average burn of about 7.5 gallons an hour, and I'm looking at about 97.5 gallons total burn. The average cost of Avgas in the southeast is about $5.12 a gallon roughly making it about a $500 total for fuel alone on round trip. This doesn't include any additional parking or landing fees. So it's weird to take off in freezing cold and then land in like summer in South Florida. But it is a welcome change, I'll take it. Some other things to consider, an airline easily would have won this contest had I taken a direct flight without a layover from Nashville to Fort Lauderdale. Considering cost, it would probably be within $200 to take my own airplane versus flying on an airline, at least for this trip at the time that I booked the airfare that I did. As a VFR pilot, weather is always going to impact long cross countries like this. Flying an airline is just a guaranteed safer way to go, especially when I have dedicated commitments to make on these kind of trips. Regardless of all of that, flying your own airplane is just more fun. You'll never convince me otherwise, even though logistically it may not be the best option. This is our first video of 2019. I'm really excited to get back into production, and I can't thank everybody enough for watching these videos, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Check out the description in this video, along with my website, wheelinthesky.com, for some links to some really cool products that I'm going to be showcasing over the course of this year.